Welcome to refurbishing a vintage model steamboat. This is part two, making a superheater or a steam dryer as it's often called. In the previous episode, I showed the fitting of a piece of brass in the flue tube at the chimney end. I initially had to shorten this flue tube because it was too long to accommodate the engine and the piece of brass filled up the hole. But there's more to it than that. This piece of brass is going to form the basis of a superheater. A superheater or steam dryer in a gas-fired boiler fits in the flue tube and its purpose is to reheat the wet steam that's coming from the boiler. It's called wet steam because it basically is. As soon as it leaves the boiler it starts to condense and by putting a superheater in the circuit you will get much better economy of steam for your engine. Steam is not to be confused with the white stuff that comes out of the chimney of steam engines and steam locomotives. That is just water vapour. Real steam is an invisible gas and the hotter you can get it, the better it is. That is, providing that you have an engine that will deal with this hot steam, and a Stuart Models Double 10 will do that as it's a cast iron engine. A great degree of superheat is not recommended for brass engines. While I've been talking about superheaters, on screen I've been showing the construction of the superheater that I'm making, and now it's time to stick it all together. I use the term stick loosely. I'm going to silver solder it. Currently I'm using Easy Flow number no. 2 flux because I have a lot of that and the silver solder that I'm using is called Silver Flow 55 as Easy Flow number no. 2 silver solder is now discontinued. But the Easy Flow 55 works very well with the Easy Flow number no. 2 flux or the other way around. I'm putting a little bit too much flux on here. This is a demonstration and I'm going to do it in a really wrong way which will show how the flux causes the solder to run when the work is at the correct temperature. The first thing I've done wrong, and once again this is on purpose, is to use too much flux, and when the blast of the blowtorch hits it, it goes everywhere, and wherever the flux is, the silver solder will stick. You do need lots of heat. I'm going to put a blob on like that, can you see? For a moment it was just a blob on the work, because it had not reached the correct temperature. And when the work reached the correct temperature, the silver solder flashed around the joint. The next thing to do is to let the work thoroughly cool before placing it in the acid pickle bath. Never ever quench any of the work you're doing in an acid pickle bath when it's very hot. I left the superheater in the pickle bath for about an hour and then I cleaned it up on the polishing spindle and now it looks like this, very shiny. Well, not the copper part, I didn't bother with that. So now I can put the rest of my wife back in the pickle bath and carry on with the job. To get the wet steam in and the superheated steam out of the superheater, I'm going to use removable unions. This is always a good idea, because if you chew up the thread for any reason, you can remove it easily and fit a new part. Not forgetting, of course, the Loctite 542 and a nice copper washer on each one. When tightening these pieces in place, once again, don't be too heavy-handed. It is not a car cylinder head. You do not need a torque wrench for this. I would start it off with a socket, like you see here, and then just gently nip it up with my trusty adjustable spanner. And for the viewer who wrote in asking which type of adjustable spanner do I use, it is a Barco, B-A-H-C-O, and I've had it for about 35 years, I guess. It's a really good thing. And here is the Barco adjustable spanner in action. It saves me a lot of time rummaging through the drawer for little spanners. Time now to fit the boiler into the boat temporarily, and as you can see, there's just enough clearance. What I'm going to do now is fit the outlet pipe from the boiler's tap to the inlet pipe of the superheater. This is not going to be a permanent fixture. I will have to dismantle it because the boiler will not go in the boat when it's got taps and safety valves and things on it. Everything will have to be assembled when it's in the boat. I'm bending the pipe to length and I do it freehand with my hand. I don't use a pipe bender. If you're not sure what you're doing with this and you've not done much of it, it's a good idea to get some plumber's solder. Bend that to the right length, that will allow you to cut your piece of copper pipe to the right size. But, it's difficult to bend copper pipe if it's to the right size. Always cut a bit more copper than you need, so you can get hold of it with your hand to make the bends. Or, of course, use a pipe bender. But either way, it's best to cut a little bit over size, so you're not working to too close a tolerance. As you can see here, I've silver soldered the unions onto the pipe, not forgetting to put the nuts in place first. The pipe is a good fit, and now I'm fitting the safety valve. Making this safety valve work is going to be fun. 
the safety valve will output any excess pressure in a big jet that comes out of the top, but this has to be routed up a pipe that's fastened to the chimney on the superstructure, and obviously this has to be removable. Here's a clearer picture, and you can see the pipe underneath. This has to align with the safety valve, and what I have to do is make a fitting that fits over the safety valve and connects to this pipe. I don't think the pipe is 100% in line with the safety valve, but it shouldn't be too big a job to make it so. I'll just make a special fitting that fits on the safety valve, but is permanently captive to the main part of the chimney pipe. Not to be confused with the exhaust pipe, this is going to carry the exhaust steam from the engine up the chimney itself. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful.